Happening now, a new call to end the Strongsville teacher strike. And Stephanie Ramirez is live on the scene where parents are holding an anti-strike rally. Steph, what's going on out there? Well, Micah, it's been going on for about two hours now, and you'll hear all the screaming as cars honk their horns going by. You can see there's still a significant amount of people out here, parents and students, kids, all wanting this strike to come to an end. And will this happen next week is the big question now that we've recently learned a federal mediator has called for both sides to meet Tuesday. This comes after the Strongsville Teachers Union president uh, handed the school, school superintendent a new contract proposal yesterday. Until both sides meet and settle this dispute, though, the strike is still on. But, Mike, tonight it's not just those out here who are fed up with what's been going on. For the first time, we're hearing from a Strongsville substitute teacher who spoke exclusively to News Channel 5. A substitute asked not to be identified but spoke out outraged at how union members have handled this strike. Here's some of what was said. When I leave that position, when the strike is settled, if it's settled, I will leave all my lesson plans every single grade. I will be a professional because that is what I've been trained to do. And I deeply resent their lack of professionals. And there is no excuse for them to swear at us um, during training as we're trying to go to the building or being blocked physically. That is just wrong. Plain wrong. I just, I still, I still have nightmares about that day when I, that mob scene. And Mike, that mob scene this sub described happened right out here outside of City Hall before day one of this strike when substitutes were trying to go into the police headquarters to uh, register and get their background checks and teachers were outside protesting. A substitute also talked about conditions inside the classrooms, which we will have later on tonight at 11. We're live here in Strongsville on your side. Stephanie Ramirez, News Channel 5. Stephanie, thank you. Information is coming in about a local teacher who was killed in a car crash today. The crash happened in Canton just after 10 this morning. Police say 32 year old Matthew McLeese of Perry Township died in the crash. He worked for Pfeiffer Intermediate School. His Honda, Accord, his Honda Accord got into a crash with a tractor trailer. The exact cause of the crash remains under investigation. A young man is dead after his car went off the road into a pond. It happened early this morning in Grafton Township in Lorain County at Metal Road and State Route 57. Crews were called to the scene for reports of a car in a pond. Witnesses said the driver ran a stop sign and went off road before crashing into the pond. It took crews more than an hour to find the vehicle. They weren't sure if there was more, if there, was, there was another victim inside. At this time, we have confirmed there was only one person in the vehicle. That person was flown by uh, Cleveland Metro, Life Flight to Cleveland Metro. The victim did not survive, and authorities identified him as 18-year-old Dominic Zunas, Zunas of Illyria. He recently graduated from Midview High School and recently joined the Air Force. The crash remains under investigation, but authorities believe alcohol was a factor. A shooting on the streets in a suburb, and now a man died from his injuries. The shooting happened last night on West 43rd Street in Ashtabula. Officers found a 24-year-old man shot in the street and crews took him to the hospital where he died. Sometime later, police arrested a 21-year-old man. Right now, authorities have not released either of the names. We'll tell you more as we get it. Well, it was certainly a beautiful day outside, my friend Trent. And beautiful so looking. Yeah. Right. Chilly, right. though, but beautiful. Beautiful. Still chilly. We're a good, what, 10 degrees below where we're supposed to be mm -hmm. right now. So uh, it's chill is lingering around. The good news was the sunshine was bright today. And we still have about uh, a little over an hour of sunlight before the sun sets. So get out there and try to enjoy it. Let's take a look at it right now. Lots of sunshine today. Temperatures on the cool side. We saw a few low 40s out there, but mainly upper 30s today. 40 in Detroit dropping down into the upper 30s. Cleveland right now is at 35 degrees. All in all, though, tonight with these clear skies, we will drop down quickly. We will get chilly tonight. Temperatures will be cooling off very quickly as soon as that sun sets. For your evening planner here, we will be dropping into the 20s before midnight. We'll be waking up tomorrow morning in the middle 20s. I do want to show you, though, a quick little look. We do have a winter storm watch for just about everybody in northern Ohio. That excludes Lake and Ashtabula County. That's for tomorrow evening into Monday. We have another winter snowstorm headed our way, and that could bring uh, some shovelable snow to parts of northern Ohio. We'll talk about who gets it and who gets the most. 
coming up in your next forecast. All right, Trent, new developments about the tensions going on outside the local Racino. Protesting union workers and non-union workers have been clashing outside Northfield Park. This is video of the picketing from last week where union members are protesting non-union labor used to build the gambling complex. Police say they have to increase their presence due to an increase in violence, including damages to vehicles, tools stolen, and someone ran over a protester's foot. Ouch. It's not basketball, but there's a different kind of madness going on this March as people make a mad dash for Powerball tickets. The jackpot is up to $320 million today. No one hit all of Wednesday's winning numbers. After Wednesday's drawing, there were three people who hit five of the six numbers. They'll get a million dollars each. We asked ticket buyers that crucial question. What would you do with your newfound loot? I want to pay off my house. I want to get a new car for my husband and travel, and the rest goes in the bank. You know, give to some charities, help my kids out, things like that. No one hit the Powerball since early February. Tonight's jackpot is the sixth highest ever. Tonight's drawing is at 11. Earlier today, the Senate approved its first budget blueprint in four years. The democratically controlled Senate cast the vote earlier this morning, but it passed with a razor thin edge, just 50 to 49. It calls for nearly a trillion dollars in new taxes over the next decade and only modest reductions in government spending. In the coming days, the Senate now plans to call a meeting over the budget with the House. President Obama is now returning to Washington, D.C. after wrapping up his Mideast trip to Israel, the West Bank, and Jordan. For his last stop, he spent the morning visiting the famous ancient Jordanian city of Petra. The trip was largely symbolic, with low expectations that the president would jumpstart peace talks. It was an opportunity to mend rocky relations with Israel and address the growing threat of Iran. And News Channel 5 is in your community. I think you might know this lady. Anger Danita Harris was the mistress of ceremonies at a Mortgages for Mothers workshop in Cleveland. Lots of single moms and working moms gathered at Cleveland State's Woolstein Center this morning. Besides getting a better understanding of how credit works, they learned the techniques to increase their credit scores so they can one day buy a home. They also learned about mortgage products and different types of down payment programs that may be available to them. Today, you're waking up to your dream. We find that statistically, uh, single women, um, head of household being mothers, are the lowest percentage of homeowners. So by doing this, we're hoping to increase that percentage rate. Dollar Bank held today's event and holds several mortgage for mothers workshops all year. Now still ahead, history in the making as the two popes meet. What happened as Pope Francis and Benedict got together today and why it could have been tense? An unlikely meet and greet, how a local city is showing the people who live there all the goods and services available to them. And caught on video, what cameras across the east show happening in the sky late last night. We'll be right back.